Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks. Today I wanted to try out something new on this channel and do a recap of the news from this week in the Elder Scrolls Online. So in this video, we'll go through the top five posts of the week on the ESO subreddit, do a breakdown of the items for sale at the Golden Vendor, and we'll see if any of those are worth picking up, a look at the luxury vendor items, and then any other random news that we might have had come through this week. And if you already missed it, I did already release a PTS patch notes video for week three, so that discussion won't be included in this video. I also released a DPS guide for the new champion point changes, so make sure to check both of those out if you haven't already. I have them both linked down in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the top upvoted post this week on Reddit was from Thrillhouse626. Assassin's Creed ESO with Leap of Faith, recorded at Pantherfang Chapel. Here we go, let's see how it turns out. Yeah, pretty much what I expected. Should have been a wood elf, I guess. The second highest upvoted post is from Fuzzy Peaches. Can we just take a minute to appreciate the fact that ESO is a fully voice acted MMO? That's it, that's the post. It is pretty amazing, isn't it? To be honest, I think it is often taken for granted until you try out other MMOs and you see how little of the dialogue is actually voice acted and usually at a much lower quality than the cast of voice actors that are used for ESO. FF9 Batrix says, yeah, it's awesome. Still fairly new myself going through the Glenumbra zone quests. It's really engaging knowing every quest I pick up will be acted out. And ZP George said, I remember playing New World at launch and quickly realized only the main quests were voiced. It was weird going from SWOTOR and ESO, which are fully voiced, to a newly released MMO in 2021 that wasn't. Yeah, I'd say ESO is definitely a cut above other MMOs when it comes to the voice acting. The next post is from Quantum Pi. Sauce right now after updating NAPC servers and fixing Cyrodiil lag. The game has become more complex over time. The engine is old and outdated. We don't know how to fix the lag because of spaghetti code. The game was running on 2012 hardware. So I'll be honest, I didn't think upgrading 10 year old hardware would make a very big difference, but there are a lot of reports on PC NA right now that performance in Cyrodiil, even in population locked campaigns, has been the best it's been in a long time. StadDaddy24 says, did the hardware refresh actually fix the lag? I'm in console, so was wondering if I have hope for the future, LOL. Grokker says, wait, wait, what? And Quantum Pi responded, Past two days, there's been no input delay in Greyhost on NA, even with four ball groups running in full force. And then Toast Without Butter says, I'm legit scared to get my hopes up from hearing this. Me too, Toast Without Butter. Me too. But hopefully this is the start of something great for Cyrodiil. The next post is from Deltia's Gaming, the top five tips for increasing your DPS in ESO. Most of you probably know who Deltia is at this point, but make sure to give his YouTube and Twitch a follow if you don't. He's one of the ESO content creators that has been around the longest, and I won't go through all of this post here as it is really long, but it has lots of great info listed, so make sure to give it a read if you are looking to improve your DPS. And then the last post here is from Mr. Stack. Even with the hybridization, I would still love a Magicka-based melee skill tree with some high elf hero spells. Rydra Lane said, hang on, I've been out of the game a while. Hybridization, does that mean you can blend melee and magic now? Sword mage and all that? Yes, yes you can, and I think it's pretty awesome. Sildris Telvani says, they don't even have to workshop what the abilities might be. They're right there in the very first trailer teasing the magic system. With the huge variety of physical weapons and skill lines in the game and just a bunch of reskinned staffs for destruction with slightly different passives, it would be awesome to see this in the game. Also spellcrafting, which they teased years ago. Lord Blizzard said, what is spellcrafting? Oh no, don't get me started on the most amazing and awesome system that could ever come to ESO and I'll shave my eyebrows and head into a 24 hour stream if they ever announce it. Uh, anyways, those were the top five Reddit posts this week on the ESO subreddit. So now let's shift gears a bit and take a look at what is offered on the Golden Vendor. For the two monster sets, first we have Slime Craw Shoulders. I will say too, I like picking up shoulders from the Golden Vendor a lot more than the Helms. The shoulder pieces have a good deal of RNG involved when picking them up with Undaunted Keys, while the helmets with the new curated RNG are super easy to farm in each weight. You only have to run the dungeon three times and you're guaranteed to get each weight. So I'll often check if I'm missing any shoulder pieces of the sets that are on the Golden Vendor and pick those up while they're available, rather than playing the slot machine with my undaunted keys. I usually pass on the helmets though. 
So this particular set, Slimecrow, is one of the most commonly used One Piece monster sets in the game. The reason is because at 744 crit chance, it is slightly higher than your traditional bonus of 657. The two piece is not nearly as commonly used because Minor Berserk is a pretty common buff to get in a number of other ways, though it could still be a strong option if you aren't getting that buff anywhere. But really the One Piece is where this one shines. So definitely take a look and pick this one up if you're missing your slime cross shoulders and any of the weights. Next is Swarm Mother. I was actually missing my light shoulder piece of this, so I was able to grab it this week and complete my Swarm Mother collection now. This one is very popular for the One Piece because it gives both stamina and magicka. And then the two piece bonus is also somewhat common for tanking in certain scenarios. When you block an enemy that is between 8 and 22 meters from you, you spend strands of spider silk to pull the enemy to you. This effect can occur once every one second. The pull generally won't work on elite enemies, but can be nice for smaller adds to help wrangle everything up without having to manually chain in everything. Definitely not one that is super common for a bunch of encounters, but probably worth having in your bag if you do a fair amount of tanking. And it can also be very trolly in PvP. For the jewelry this week, the two Overland sets are Defiler and Vampire Lord. Keep in mind for this vendor, the Overland sets that she sells are bind on equip. So if you have some extra AP and a good set comes up, it is pretty common to pick up a few extras and then sit on them for a while and sell them down the road. Since they do come in gold quality, you can offer people much better deals than they'd pay to actually gold out the item themselves while still making a good bit of gold for yourself. But this week, I wouldn't say either of these sets are super popular. I definitely see both used in some off meta types of setups. Defiler can be kind of fun going with a pet setup. I used it on a build on my Stam Sork before where I was trying to stack as many pets as possible. The two through four piece bonuses are actually really good on it, but the Defiler itself doesn't do anything crazy for damage. It's not bad. It's just kind of a run of the mill five piece bonus. And then Vampire Lord. I've seen some people messing with it, especially back when Frenzy was really OP and could stack up really high. But generally it seems like you're better off just using something on the five piece that gives you stats rather than trying to play into your Vampire passives more. For the dungeon sets, we have Hagraven's Garden and Warlock. So remember, you can't sell these. These are bind on pickup since they come from dungeons. Again, neither of these are very popular options either. For Hagraven, it gives major protection for 8 seconds, but has a really long cooldown of 30 seconds. So I think it would either need its own unique buffs that are a bit stronger or a much, much shorter cooldown before it would even be worth considering. For the Warlock set, the stats are actually pretty nice here if you are going recovery with one of your sets. And the nice thing is that it gives it to you when you are low at that under 25% point. So you're always getting that Magicka back when you need it, not wasting a proc of it when you're already high on Magicka. If you proc it on cooldown, it averages out to about 500 Magicka recovery. So definitely a nice chunk there. I just don't see people needing this much extra recovery too often. And usually other aspects of builds are tweaked before going all in on a five piece set. But but maybe for some PvP setups, this could be all right. That's it for the Golden Vendor. Now let's quickly check out some of the furniture that's available this weekend on the Luxury Furniture. We had a bunch of trees, the Alinor Maples, this first one, Diminutive, then Purple, then Red, Sinuous, a Bush, Rhododendron, and then the high ticket item this week is the Alinor Windmill, and it is pretty massive. I set it up in my house to check out the size, and yeah, it pretty much towers over all of the other stuff in here. I definitely won't be leaving this in this spot, but just wanted to give you all a quick look at it up next to some other stuff. But aside from all that, there wasn't a whole lot of other news this week. We did get this little infographic here from over on the ESO Twitter account, and I think these things are pretty cool. I like when they update us on some of the stats behind specific events. It's kind of fun to take a look at. But I'd say out of everything that did happen this week, really hoping the good performance being reported for PCNA Cyrodiil is not a fluke and it does continue. I think that could be really such a spark of life for that part of the game. Cyrodiil can be so much fun when your abilities are working and unfortunately for a really long time it was just a roll of the dice whether that would happen or not. And I know many players, myself included, were just too frustrated with the experience to continue subjecting ourselves to it. But I'm not gonna lie, against my better judgment, I'm letting myself get my hopes up just just a little bit for Cyrodiil going forward. That's going to do it for this video. Definitely let me know how you liked it and if this is something you'd like to see me do more often on the channel. I want to give a big thanks to my current Patreon supporters and YouTube members. There are ways to help support the channel and keep these videos coming for as little as $3. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Cougars Bay and the Cougar City Guild, the Order of War Guild, 
Iffy, Cantankerous Cat, Shady, Lakewin816, Mordecai1212, Santanico, Nalandia, and my wonderful wife. Thanks again for stopping by. I'll see y'all in the next one. Uh, bye.